Hey guys, um, today we're going to be covering the much requested How to Make Music Like Floating Points. Um, a lot of people have requested this one, and Floating Points is one of my favorite personal, or personal favorite artists, so I want to go ahead and do it. Um, and then I won't say I necessarily, like, bodied this or anything, but I definitely think I got pretty close, and I think I covered a lot of techniques that you can use um in your own music and to just sort of understand this stuff a lot more um so to start off with we're at 120 bpm which somewhere in my fortet tutorial if you've seen that is um somewhat important because it's like we want like a house beat like if you listen it's like house you know it's like um sort of a faster house four on the floor beat um and it's not slower like nicholas yar or like you know, it's not, like, meant to be slower. Um, it's really meant to be fast and upbeat. But it's not quite, like, club house music tempo, if that makes any sense. So 120 uh, gets us there. Um, to start off with, I'll show you, like, the lead. I'll just go down here, as I usually do. Um, and the lead is actually pretty simple. But there's some cool techniques that uh, we can use. Uh, or that I used in here that you can hopefully use in your own music and just in general to get a better understanding of sound design. Um, I'll take all the processing off of this lead. You can hear what I did. It's analog. Um, and it's just one layer. I don't have any weird stuff going on. So if you hear, it's just like a very basic saw pluck sound. So I have one saw oscillator, a noise oscillator, um, and then the filter with an envelope, um, and then the amplitude, both the envelope, the amp, the filter envelope and the amp envelope are like exactly the same as stock. I didn't even touch those. And there's a little bit of resonance on the filter, and the frequency's down there. So we get that full-bodied pluck sound. Um, now, if you hear it, it sounds like the filter is sort of being automated, which it is not. But um. Instead, it's being it's still moving around, of course. The frequency is going up and down. But it's moving in this more, like, freeform way that is a little bit less uh, controlled and a little bit more... I don't want to say random because it's based off an LFO, but you get what I'm saying. It's more, like, um, sort of, like, raw, and it, it changes every single time. You, it's never going to be the same twice, and that's what we really want here. And I think um, is a big key to making this kind of music is like um floating points when a lot of his stuff and a lot of like in general this kind of stuff is very organic and it's very much about like I said like the idea that you never hear you hear the same sounds of course throughout the track but they always have like little changes to them um and they have you know they're very organic like I said like that's what happens when you play real instruments like if you play a real drum for example like a snare drum yes it's going to sound similar and very very close but it's never going to be exactly the same sound twice because, like, you're always going to hit it from a slightly different position or it's always going to be, like, you know, whatever kind of thing about it. Um, so you kind of want to try to recreate that mentality or use that mentality going into making electronic music for this kind of stuff. So that's the idea here with this filter. I never wanted it to be at the same spot twice. That's why I didn't just automate it and I used this LFO. So the way you do this... <laughs> is you put an LFO on the frequency here, which is very slow, or not very slow. It is very slow, but it's only on there a little bit. <laughs> um, I just have it up like two or whatever. For reference, the highest one is four. So I guess like halfway, whatever it would be, um, if you're using like Serum or something, or you're not using Analog. Um, and then the LFO, what I have is, if you see, I have Retrigger off. And what this means is that if I have Retrigger on, if you hear each time, you still get that movement, but it restarts the phase of the LFO. The phase means like what point on the wave uh, it starts. But when I have the retrigger off, it keeps going up and down and up and down with each new note. Um, so that's what you want. The key to this is turning off the retrigger. Um, and you can do this in any other sense as well. And then you have just like a very slow rate. So it just sort of churns on, I suppose throughout the track. Um, I didn't do anything else in analog, but after that I added this echo, which I made just like this stereo thing. Um, and the way I achieved a very stereo effect is by setting the left ear to 16th notes and the right ear to 8th notes. Um, so, essentially, 
That makes it wider because, like, if I just did both 16th notes, it's still wide, but this way, there's a difference between what you're hearing in the right ear and the left ear, or the left ear and the right ear. Um, and so, in this way, we can get a little bit more, yeah, like I said, like a little bit wider stereo image, and it just sounds a little bit better. Um, now, if you hear there, there's a little bit of this wobble in here, um, and I put the ducking on as well, which makes it sort of duck out of the way. It's similar, it's a similar effect to like side chaining. Um, but yeah, this wobble makes it like, makes the, um, what's it called? The echoes sort of have like a vibrato on them. So it's a pretty cool sound. Um, to do that, and it gives it a lot more sort of analog feel, which is what I was going for here as well, because I know Floating Points is very, very big on using, like, analog gear. Like, I read a lot of interviews with him, and he talked about, like, having, like, um all these different old, like, consoles and, and just, in general, like I said, like, gear to make your stuff sound more old, I guess, <laughs> and warm and vintage. Um, so that's what we got going on. After that, I put on a bit warm, you know, I had to do it to him. Um, put on a bit warmer to make it a lot more like gritty and warmer. So I did that, and then I just side chained it to the kick. Um, now as far as the notes that we have playing, I know usually I would cover those first, but um, essentially I have this pattern where I've taken pretty simple chords, and then I've put the sort of middle note up, and it's an F major. So it starts with F major. And I'm like arpeggiating it in this way where it's like dun -dun 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 -dun. Um, and then it's this chord, which is just F major with the root down one semitone. Now this is a pretty common chord progression. Um it's used a lot in this style of music actually. Um I've used it before in my this like Bruce Brubacker Philip Glass remix I did for them in like 2016. I'll link it in the description. But um it's a good kind of sound. Um and you get this like this major chord, and then you get these two notes, E and A, which go pretty nicely together, and then it just resolves to that chord, and does that at the end. Um, and yeah, there's not really too much to say there, you know, you just kind of want to play around, but it definitely helps to make it rhythmic like this. Like, if I just had, like, say I just did, like, like, eighth notes across that aren't, like, super, it's rhythmic, but it's not, like, doing a whole lot, you get me? Um, it wouldn't really be as cool and it wouldn't really work with the groove and it wouldn't work with the bass line as well if you hear i have the bass line and the uh the lead just sort of like they play off of each other they work together as opposed to just um being separate and just sort of playing at the same time there's a difference between having things play together and having things play at the same time and this is about playing having them play together um, I also have one of the Logic swings on there. Not too much to say. I just use the res I use the Logic swing like the groove pool, as opposed to like moving the notes back myself, because I have a lot of elements in here that are using that swing, and it's a lot easier to use a groove and have them all be perfectly synced up, as opposed to if I moved it a little bit off the grid, then I'd have to move everything perfectly off the grid at the same time, and it, it would just be a nightmare. Um, so after that, we have the bass. Um, now as far as the notes on the bass, they just follow the chord progression, and they have this pattern. I'll play the kick so you can hear it. Um, not too much to say about it. It's just kind of like a simple pattern. Um, and yeah, as far as the patch for that, it's analog again, as you have probably already seen on the side. Um, but this time, I have just one square oscillator. The filter with the um, envelope just at the default setting here, and I have the frequency down. Like, all this stuff is default on the envelope. Um, and then I have the envelope up for whatever, like, modulate or not modulating, um, moving the filter frequency. And then I just have the default amplitude envelope as well. So it's a pretty simple patch, actually. <laughs> But I wanted to make this a square wave to differentiate it from the lead. Because the lead is like so saw-y. 
Um, and I wanted this to be like a beefy, square, subby kind of bass. So I made it a beefy, square, subby kind of bass. Um, and as far as processing goes on that, I'll show you without this stuff. This is actually the same stuff. Yeah, see, it's just a simple square wave. Um, it's the same stuff as is on the lead, but it's a little bit different. Um, so I have the echo on here. And once again, I did it two separate things in each ear. So the left ear, this one isn't sync though. So these are just milliseconds, but they're very fast. Because I didn't want it to be too stereo or too much delay. Obviously, in your bass, you wouldn't want that. But I wanted a little bit of analog sort of feel to it. Um, going with the sort of like using, making it sound like analog gear thing. Um, and after that, I just put on, I kept the modulation the same. I did that on the anal the lead as well. Just the modulation is just the default setting. But I put it, I turned it on with the wobble. And then put on the amount a little bit. Um, just like that. Not too much to say. I think I turned down the dry wet as well. Um, and yeah, after that I just have a bit warmer on there. I mean, would it really be one of my videos without it, you know? But it actually does help here because it makes this a little bit warmer and more sort of harmonic. Um, and then I just have it side chain to the kick. Now after that, I'll talk about the drums as a whole because they're pretty, they're like very simple. we have is we just have this like sort of thumpy low end kick which i didn't do any processing to but i do have it sort of leveled out it's more about just leveling it and getting that right um and i have these hi-hats i'll show you so it's three different hi-hats and i know you may be thinking oh well why don't you just do the same thing with one well the idea here is they're very similar hi-hats but they're they're different as well, so you get these cool little these little patterns. Um, and I actually did some interesting stuff with these. I'll start with the first one. Um, so if you look here, I'll talk about all this in a second. But if you look in here, I moved each of these eighth notes slightly off. Um, this one's the same, I guess, and this one is too. But they're all sort of slightly off, so they're never gonna be like perfectly the same and you can hear that when i play it with the kick it's sort of like it's almost like it's speeding up and slowing down a little bit which is cool again you want it to be sort of organic and real sounding so that's what i was going for um after that i put on the add some random midi preset in ableton um or the velocity preset so what that does is basically these are it's controlled they're not just completely random like if i just did it completely random well, I guess now it's not doing it, but if I just made it like completely random, the volumes would be a little bit too, uh, too sort of changing. But I have this add some random, and it changes the volume of every hit basically, but it's the velocity. Um, and so we get like a little bit of variance in the volumes, um, which again sort of resembles like playing something live. Maybe this doesn't sound like a real drummer, but like maybe if you played in like a hi hat on like an MPC or something, or with like some pads like an Ableton push or whatever, you would get that. They wouldn't always be perfectly the same velocity because, again, humans are imperfect. You can't get exactly the same thing every time. Um, after that, I added on this little hi-hat. And all that is is just this tiny little sound. And then I have this little swing pattern um, with the logic swing. Um, and that just adds a little bit of accentuation, you know. It's just a nice little sound in the background to keep it interesting. I'm going to have the add some random on there as well for the same reason. I didn't want it to be perfectly the same every time. Um, after that, I just added on this one at the end here. And it only plays once throughout the whole, or I guess twice throughout the four bar move. Here, I'll start it from like that little tss at the end. Um, and I didn't put add some random on there. It's just very simple. It's just a 16th note with the um, logic swing. Um, now after that, I have the snare. And I'm seeing, I put Valhalla Vintage Verb on here, which I can go into, but I will, uh, I'll take that off for a second. Yeah, I'll take that off. Um, but this is a very simple snare. Um, I had to do a little bit of processing to it, though. Um, because if you see, there's, like, fades on it and stuff. Um, so the original sample 
was like this. So if you hear, it's got that texture that I like, that like, that snappy rim shot. But it had a little bit of weird stereo stuff. I think it might be out of phase. I'm not really sure. Um, and it was like very long, which if you hear, doesn't exactly sound, isn't exactly a good combination of things to go with this like tight, snappy house groove. So what I did was I shortened it and put the fade on it. You just do that. Um, and then I put this utility on it, converting it to mono using, like playing only the left channel in mono, if that makes any sense. Um, and yeah, there we go. Look at that reverb on there, giving it a little bit of space, but honestly, I think this is cool too, just being dry. But, um, yeah, there you go, guys. That's it. How to make music like floating points. Um, I just wanted to sort of explain and highlight some key concepts. Like I was saying, it's really just about making your sounds sort of random and organic, um, but controlled and tight and electronic in that sense. Like, it's almost like, it's like the best of both worlds, now that I'm thinking about it. It's like the rawness and organic feel that using, like, live instruments or just in general using analog gear gives, but the controlled and tight sound and just sort of general, more control you have um, and more controlled sound that you get using, like, a computer and using just digital gear in general. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much. Um, go check out my tracks. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video. Comment. Share it with your friends or something. Um, and yeah. Thank you so much, guys.